Yeah, when we put that back in, we'll have to regrease it. For future installation. I can't believe that you use half a tire and then you throw it out. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. I read my tire so low that it comes off the bead on its own. You better just go first. Dude, we can get a little pretty far on this sucker. This is freaking hard. This is when you just get the torches out because we're not going to use this tire anyways. Yeah. I just don't have a torch set. New tire! Come on down! Courtesy of Jake the Toilet Snake. Do you find, do you find uh, that name offending in any way? Jake, what are we doing with this tire? We're going to donate it to science. We're going to see what, what went wrong with this tire. Why it only lived as long as it did? Take this to Buff State, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> That's where my grandma is. <laughs> is she really? I think so. Bah! Jeez! <laughs> <laughs> you scared the <laughs> shit out of me. You are a snake. Oh. <laughs> I was like, dude, this thing's attacking him. I was about to ditch it. <laughs> most afraid of with this race is that I get hungry. I get hungry all the freaking time. I can eat a huge meal, like a huge meal, and 15 minutes later I'm hungry. I heard the last race you went to, they uh, questioned what was in your camel pack because uh, <laughs> you won the race. They wanted to check it for steroids. First of all, I wanted to do it my way, and then you said, no, we're going to do it this way because it worked before. And now you're totally just going to bail out? I guess I will. But I'm, I'm having a hard time getting it done. I understand that. See if we tried my way. We might... Take it anyways. Or not, but it's big. big bite. It's big. We're gonna take that sucker in. No, we're not. <laughs> Come on, get some. I gotta be over there to get some. Okay, Come over here. We'll, we'll, we'll allow you to get some. I got some. You definitely got some. Jake, the only thing I can conclude out of this experience is tire changing sucks. <laughs> That's the only thing I can conclude out of this. It was fun, but it was a pain in the butt. And I think your tire runs harder than mine, <laughs> personally. It's getting to be lunchtime. Lunch was delicious. I got a chicken tender sub. Barbecue, real nice, real tasty. But now we gotta work on the Kawasaki. Kawasaki, come on down! Jake left right before I went to lunch. He didn't have time. Otherwise, I would have taken him to lunch. He deserved it, putting his tire on and his tire on. We did scratch up the rim a little bit, but who the frick cares? It's called a dirt bike for a reason. You're gonna hit rocks and all sorts of different things. This isn't a show vehicle, that's for sure. But I need to tighten the spokes, and then I wanna clean in there. Not sure how I'm going to accomplish that since I don't have a huge pipe cleaner. But my mission is to tear this thing down further down than the Honda. The Honda's torn down pretty good. If we can beat that, that'd be terrific. Whether we need to or not, it's totally irrelevant. We're gonna tear it down anyways. Tear the seat off, check out the top end. All that good stuff. 
We gotta make sure she's ready for the race. Do a little brat, brat, brat. I really felt bad for Jake when he dumped my whole drawer of tools. I've done that like three times and it sucks. Well, I'm just glad he dropped it. That way I could just help. I would have picked them up for him, but I'm glad that he realized he made the mess and then he's responsible for cleaning it up. But like I said, Jake's always there for me, so I wouldn't mind picking up after his mess. Not at all. Now the tricky part is, I have a Kawasaki that's soon to be apart, and then I have a Honda that's already apart, so I don't want to mix up the two parts. So I'm going to put the bolts that I take out back into the spots. Saying that, I need to tear down a hell of a lot more before I go ahead and reconstruct. What I mean by that is, you have these pieces of plastic, and I can't put this bolt back in, because if I put that bolt back in, then I can't take off this piece of plastic. This bike currently has 77.7 hours on it. Lucky sevens. Now I bought this bike when it had 24 hours on the engine. It had accumulated 24 hours after the engine has been rebuilt. The bike itself had way more than 24 hours on it. I bought it from a racer. He rode with us a few times. He usually hangs out with my cousin. And I saw it on Facebook, so then I bought it. It had a uh, problem inside the engine, and I that's why I scored it cheap. Then I welded it and fixed it, and because I knew how to do that stuff, I scored the bike cheaper than it would usually go for. Why I mentioned the hours was 24 minus 77 is what? That's 53 hours, I think? Now the 53 hours that went on this were a lot harder than the time that I put on the Honda. The Honda doesn't have nearly 53 hours on it. What's funny is 53 hours isn't even an extensive amount of time. Like that's all my dirt bike experience, this and the Honda. Not very much, but I think I learned the game pretty quickly. Granted, I'm not no Travis Pastrana, but it was kind of cool to go from zero to wherever I am now. And I really appreciate my natural skills. So these are the only two dirt bikes I've purchased. Jake, on the other hand, has gone through them like, like underwear. And he's lapped me in dirt bike time way before I even got a dirt bike. He's had a dirt bike since he was in, I think, fifth or sixth grade. I didn't get one until I was in 12th grade. I don't know, it's all documented on YouTube. That video was fun to make. The one with me buying this bike. You can find it, it's all documented on YouTube. I do remember that the time I purchased this bike, my girlfriend and I were having, a, not an argument, more like a conflict, which isn't too surprising. We have conflicts every once in a while. Lately, we have been very good. I remember she left my house. I was mad, she was mad. Usually girls like eat chocolate or do whatever girls do and then guys do whatever guys do. I just went out and bought a dirt bike. I guess instead of eating chocolate, I found my satisfaction from spending a lot of money. It's quickly becoming, well at least looking like a trials bike. A trials bike is one of those stunt bikes that have no seats. And a high performance engine. High performance clutch, well everything's high performance, but there is no sitting down for trialing. The air filter's a little dirty. Add it to the pile. Now what I understand is the Kawasaki dominates for 250. Well at least when it comes to valve maintenance. The time that it takes to do a valve job on these things, supposedly, defeats everybody. Time wise. And that's understandable because there's a nice big spot just like the 450, my Honda. Same exact thing except you have a, a lot smaller of a engine, well at least a cylinder, which makes this valve cover smaller. Like the 450, it's just about uh, another half of what this valve cover is. But I'm gonna tear this all apart, I gotta put you guys on the charger. Let you recharge your batteries. I'll be back in a second though. See, that wasn't so bad, I'm back already. Let's show you what the valves are supposed to be at. So you got 0.17 to 0.22, that's the exhaust. And then 0.10 to 0.15 is the intake clearance. And that's what the spec is. This is the actual measurement. So the front is the exhaust valves. 
how you can tell is the exhaust goes to the front of the engine. The intake goes to the back of the engine. So you have your intake valves, your exhaust valves. For all you guys that are interested, so the front are 0.152. Both of them measured out 0.152. And then the intakes measured out 0.102. So the intake is spot on. So here's the tolerance. 0.17 minus 0.22 equals 0 0.05. We're only off 0 0.018, just shy of two. This allows five. So I'm not going to change out the shims. The shims govern the distance or the clearance between the valve and the rocker arm. I, I could be more specific, but I don't want to because I'm not here to be a teacher. If you learn something on my videos, then that's fine, that's perfect, and that's amazing. But I'm here to just show you what I'm doing. I'm not a professional motocross mechanic. I'm just, I'm just simply showing you what I'm doing to get ready for an event. So we're off 0 0.018, not gonna change them out. We will in the future once the valves go out of clearance a little bit more. If you have some personal experience with valves and have any tips, leave them in the comment section below. I would really appreciate it. I would love to learn from your experience. Now you guys heard my plan on what I want to do with this thing. I want to disassemble it more than I did the Honda. And it would be awesome if I went through this whole thing, found some bugs, if there are any. If there aren't any, I would really appreciate that. But I just want to go through everything Make sure the carburetor's good, the valves are good in my opinion. Plus, even if I wanted to change the shims, I probably wouldn't get them in time. Oh, I don't think I've ever taken this bolt off, ever. Boot's in very good shape. No damage. Looks like it's torn down more than Honda. Bye-bye.